Hey guys, Michael the DC Multiverse Collector here, really excited after a long hiatus from any uploads on the channel to be bringing you this review of the DC Multiverse Azrael Batman Armor. Now this is the Platinum Chase variant, this was sent to me by the great folks at Head Start Toys and McFarlane Toys, so big thank you. Uh, really excited to take a look at this figure, huge fan of the original Azrael armor they released, that was from the Nightfall um, sort of subline where we got Catwoman, we got Batman. This is Azrael from Night's End, uh, Jean-Paul Valley in the Batman armor. It sort of evolved. Now this is the Platinum Chase variant. As I said, uh, the regular edition is in the red uh, variant of this armor, which is kind of interesting because from memory, correct me if I'm wrong, super fans, but from memory, the red suit only appeared in a couple of panels when uh, he'd sort of been set on fire or was in heat. Um, but by and large, throughout Night's End, this is the look for Azrael and his Batman armor. So uh, very curious that this blue version is the Platinum Chase, um, uh, being cynical uh, about it. <laughs> doesn't know one any favors, but it makes it almost seem like we're trying to drive artificial demand for this platinum. But anyway, if it had been up to me, this would have been the regular release. The red version would have been the platinum, but McFarlane will do what McFarlane does. And I can't argue with how great this figure looks in the box. Super excited to get him out. Um, I'll save my commentary for when I get him out, but you know, I can already tell a lot of the original sins of that Azrael first release have been corrected here, but we'll get into it. Anyway, let's have a look at the packaging. You'll see here it's Azrael in his Batman armor from Batman Knight's End. And on the back, you will see some very, very cool artwork of the Azrael in Batman armor in that sort of red look from those few panels of the comic. It looks awesome. Anyway, without further ado, let's get this guy open. Before we do, if you're new here, please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. It really helps me out. And um, tell me, uh, what do you think? Would you have rather picked this version up as the regular release? I suspect everybody is going to say they would have preferred that. Let me know in the comments if, if you agree with that sentiment. But anyway, I've talked long enough. Let's get Azrael open and see how awesome he actually is. Okay, so here is Knight's End Azrael in Batman armor out of the box with everything you get. Let's get the basic and boring stuff out of the way as per usual. We get the display stand. It is flat, it is black, it is thin, it's marked with the DC logo. Good to have, but nothing exciting to talk about. Next, we have the trading card as always, and uh, has that beautiful art of Azrael in his Batman armor, of course, from the frame where it is heated up and red. Doesn't match this version of the figure, but that's okay. Still great art. And there is the bio for Jean-Paul Valley. if you want to pause and have a read about one of comics' greatest wankers, Jean-Paul Valley. Now, more interestingly, the primary accessory we get in the box are the, uh, what would you call them? The uh, spikes, or the, the sort of wings of the cape, if you will. Now, Jean-Paul Valley, if you don't know, is sort of the heir to Batman after Bane breaks his back. And uh, Jean-Paul decides that the best way to be Batman is to be super armored up and be a total asshole. And that's what he does. And so eventually he, he ends up in this sort of hyper techy armor with these sick kind of metallic wing cape things. And then by the end of the story, you know, Bruce Wayne gets the upper hand by dismantling his armor bit by bit. It's a really amazing classic story. Uh, and that's what we get. We get that sort of amazing sort of wing-like armor. Now, is this really an accessory or is it part of the figure? You know, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but for my money, it's fair enough because these do add sort of extra bulk and plastic to the figure and they are a decent looking accessory. You can kind of see these are nicely sculpted on both sides, which is really nice. And they sort of just plug into his back. So let me go and have a go at doing that and we'll see what he looks like all armored up. All right, so here is Azrael with his sort of metallic cape wing spike blade things attached. As you can see, they add a considerable amount of bulk to his backside. They're impressive, they're large, they look really shiny and, and great. Uh, they do throw the figure a little bit off balance, so you have to be careful how you pose him. I'm sure he's going to topple over any minute. Another thing to note is that they port in in that upper sort of uh, pauldron, you know, shoulder piece uh, up here. This is a softer plastic and this is a harder plastic. So essentially you're just porting this harder piece into the softer piece 
and um, it doesn't give a satisfying snap. You kind of just got to wedge it in there and you can't really tell if you've got it in all the way. You kind of just smush and smush and smush until it feels right. Uh, and so not the most satisfying thing to insert them, but they stay in really, really nicely. There's no sense that they're going to come out or anything like that. But the way they're ported in, so they're ported in at two points on the blade, uh, which means you can't really angle them. So there's no maneuverability or posability of these blades. They kind of go in and they're aligned. Um, so you'll see that they are kind of got a little bit of a spread to them, um, but that's all you're going to get. So from straight on, you're not going to get a sort of get the blades flared out dramatically or anything. They're kind of just going to flow right behind Azrael like that, which is fine. That's kind of accurate to how they look in the comic. I just wish there was scope to kind of angle them out a little bit to give him some more presence, give the wings some more presence, or the cape rather. I'm going to mix up wings and cape the whole review, so forgive me in advance. But anyway, as a completed figure, I think it's fair to say this guy looks absolutely incredible. Now, the original Azrael figure, which I'm going to bust out in a moment, was also a really awesome looking figure. There were some complaints with it, and those have been rectified here. And those complaints are really about the color blue that he was. Uh, it was a very dull, light blue, and everyone was sort of clamoring and comparing to the Mafex and saying it should look like the Mafex, which, uh, believe it or not, had this rich sort of metallic blue look to it. Uh, and the gold here was sort of this deep gold. And, you know, really color wise, this platinum chase fixes all the complaints from that original. Here is uh, the original release with the new release. You know, the difference in blues is striking. And, and this clearly is what that should have been uh, in the first place. Uh, I like the darker gray for the, the uh, rest of the suit as well on the legs there. Um, but, um, you know, you can see when you look at these together that um, this new one is just uh, a heavy retool of that original, but that makes sense, I guess. And uh, there are very meaningful improvements all round, like this tubing on the gauntlet through to the back, obviously this whole upper torso piece, the head, the hands are different. Interestingly, this new one only comes with fist hands. This original one comes with claw hands. I think a set of interchangeable hands for this new one would have been good. I actually think this version would have looked better with the claw hands and you can't swap them around because the colors are all wrong. So bear that in mind. So yeah, look for a retool, I think this is actually brilliant and, and looks better than the original. I think if you could only get one, I think the new one is the way to go. I think this is the more iconic look. Uh, for Jean-Paul Valley when he's Batman. This is sort of the one that jumps to mind. He's at his douchiest, his most jerky, his most assholey when he's fully armored up. You know, all the power's gone to his head. It's just, a, it's a really, you know, iconic look for the character. Uh, that is in his blue costume. Uh, the red version, not so much. And again, I really think it's a huge mistake to have the red version be the regular release and the blue version be the platinum. And um, I just, I'd like to see someone mount a defense for, for why it was done that way other than to drive demand for this hard to get rare figure uh, that's now going to sort of be expensive on the aftermarket because everyone wants the blue one and it's hard to find. A little bit lame, I would not be shocked if we see this blue version in a two pack in like six to 12 months time. McFarlane tends to do that, gives everyone what they want down the track in a re-release. So keep your eyes open for that. Anyway, back to this figure in and of itself. You'll see he looks great all around. The paint is sort of fairly liberal. Uh, Blue and black paint on this upper piece looks really, really good. Gold paint on the torso really, really pops uh, beautifully. Not gold here on the belt and on the buckle around the leg, but you know, the sculpting is really, really nice. And you see the level of detail is just all round. And I know it's hard to see with these uh, wing blade things, but as I said, you get this beautiful sort of like uh, tube that links the back of his armor to his gauntlet. Looks great. It's very, very soft. Gonna have to treat that pretty gently. And just like the original Azrael sculpt, this is just packed with texture and detail. The spikes here are that sort of semi-soft plastic, so they're not gonna kill you. Um, yeah, and it's just, it's a beautifully sculpted figure. I really like the proportions. I like the level of detail. Um, you know, these gauntlets have just got detail all round. Um, and this is the stuff that McFarlane does best. Minute details, great sculpting, um, you know, great 90s designs. Like he's just, yeah, sort of these 80s and 90s designs, he just kills them. Um, and uh, yeah, they're his jam, his aesthetic, and you can tell he, he puts the love into these uh, figures. And this is, this is no joke. I mean, look at that head sculpt. It's really sinister, really cool. 
this is just a badass looking figure all around and I'm kind of just, you know, I just get distracted looking at it while I'm trying to do this review because it looks so, so cool. So for his articulation, I had to remove the wing blades because they were just getting in the way. Starting at the head, you'll see that it can spin 360 degrees, absolutely no problem. Looks down really nicely in that sort of neck piece. That's no impediment and beautifully looks up as well. So you get rock from side to side, absolutely no issues with the movement of the head. Arms go up beyond a T-pose, you'll see you've got the butterfly joint there, gives you a little bit of backward and forward movement. Yeah, double jointed elbows, swivel and a rotation at the wrist, but it's really hard to see because of all this gauntlet stuff. It doesn't, you kind of really can't do much with it. That's just a function of the design. Hard to get much expression out of the wrists. 360 degrees at the waist, not that much forward crunch because this piece here collides with the torso, you're not going to get much crunch. Backwards a little bit more, which is nice. So really good at the torso for, for given the sort of complexity of this design here. Can do the splits, can kick out easily 90 degrees. Double jointed knees, ankle pivot, up down, toe articulation, though it's pretty jammed up. There you go, toes. Uh, nothing, no rotation here at the thigh, which it kind of looks like it has, but it doesn't. Yeah, and you'll see at the back here, it's got the soft diaper piece, which is slightly harder than some other figures, sculpted really, really nicely, but has enough give in it to allow some backwards movement. Yeah, so overall, this figure moves just as well as you'd expect it to. Very standard McFarlane articulation, uh, excels in some areas such as the head articulation uh, and maybe a little bit more limited in the crunch than you would hope. But overall, it, it's going to do everything you want it to do and, and look good while doing it. So let's do some comparisons and then wrap up this review. So here is Azrael in Batman armor alongside a selection of our other figures from the Batman Nightfall, Night Quest, Night's End storyline. You see, I haven't included the Mega Figure Bane from a couple of years ago because of course that isn't really a Nightfall uh, costume. We are getting a more accurate Nightfall Bane in a two pack in the next month or two. So stay tuned for that. But for now, this is our sort of Nightfall, Night Quest, Night's End collection. And it's really, really, really cool. You'll see we've got Nightfall Catwoman there on the end. We've got the original release of Azrael in his Batman armor the latest version. Then we've got Nightfall Batman, still one of the best Batman figures that McFarlane has released to date. And then we've got Nightfall Nightwing, which is an okay figure. Um, I think he's clearly the weak link amongst these four, all of whom have got beautiful sculpting. And then he's sort of just sitting there with his Blue Beetle Booster Gold body buck and he's painted on details. He doesn't quite cut the mustard. And it's a shame that he doesn't sort of keep up the quality uh, of the figures from this uh, storyline. But look, they all look really, really great together, particularly the Batman and the uh, Azrael um, armor that we've just got. They look fantastic. Uh, a great selection, and I hope we get more figures from the storyline soon. So, this latest release of Batman and his Azrael armor from Night's End is an absolute winner. Easily one of my favorite McFarlane figures of the year. Sure, it's sort of a retooling of a figure that's couple of years old now but I think this fixes a lot of the issues that we had with the previous release the colors are on point even the red version with that metallic red paint is a great bet but if you can get this platinum chase variant I think there's no doubt this is the one to get it's a shame it's a platinum chase and not the regular I don't approve or condone that but the figure itself I can't lie it's great excellent sculpt awesome paint the wing blade things work just as they should uh, overall, it's just a fantastic addition to your shelf, and uh, I think if you can get it, you absolutely must. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope this review has been informative, entertaining, or helpful. If so, why not give it a like? And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, I know everyone always asks that, but it really, really does help get my videos seen, uh, which helps me keep producing these videos. So um, yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I have heaps more reviews coming, so please keep an eye out. Until then, happy collecting.